In this video, we are cruising back into PQCTF 2022 with Capture the Flag, cybersecurity learning, training, exercise. It's a ton of fun. In the last video, we got to do some fun stuff with packets. That's what it was. <laughs> Wireshark. I, almost, I, I forgot. Whatever. It's like two in the morning, guys. We're going to have some fun. Hope you enjoy. Let's dive in. So I am over here in my Kali Linux virtual machine. I have a Sublime Text text editor open as long as, as well as a command line, a terminal with a directory set up for Pico. But we're going to be cruising into a new category here, or at least one that we've dabbled and danced with before, the reverse engineering category with a challenge called patchme.py for 100 points. Now, some of you that have been listening in and watching some of the other videos, you might recognize that .py extension is for a Python script. So we're probably going to be playing with Python in this video here. It says, hey, can you get the flag? You want to run this Python program in the same directory as this encrypted flag. All right, so we have two things to download here. And let's move into the directory that will let us do this. I'm going to go ahead and create a directory for patch me uh, pi. And we'll hop over there and W get to download these files. Nice and easy. Super quick. All right. Done and done. And we have these two files here. We have a flag.txt enc or encrypted or encoded, whatever, and a patchme.flag.py. Uh, I'm going to use Sublime Text to open up this whole directory, the period denoting this current folder, this current directory. And that'll actually bring me to a good page where I can see, hey, both of the files included in this uh folder here. Now notice the flag.txt inc is actually trying to display some bytes or hexadecimal values, uh, raw non-principal characters or bytes that Sublime Text wouldn't normally be able to actually read or render out, but it's going to denote them as these kind of grayed out, less than a greater than symboled hexadecimal values. 0x to denote, hey, it's in hex. And you can see the letters that aren't just strictly a number, 0 through 9. We also go a through F, right? If I tried to actually cat this out and display it on the screen, some of these aren't gonna be readily able to be displayed, so it's just not going to. But you see the gaps and the spaces and things that don't make for real English or language right away, right? This isn't our flag, it is encoded or encrypted in some way. So our patchme.flag.python script must be something that we can uh, actually explore and use to recover this. Hmm. So I see comments here, as you denoted, we use that hashtag or the octothor pound symbol in Python to denote comments. It says, this function will not help you find the flag. Okay, looks like it is doing an XOR operation. Uh, if you aren't familiar, XOR is the exclusive OR operation. If you were looking at just regular bits, like a zero or a one, if you were trying to compare a zero or a one, XOR means, okay, are these things exclusive to each other? As in, are they different? A zero and a one, like, hey, those are different. So a check of, are they exclusive to each other, XOR operation, that will return true or a one. Uh, if they were the same, a one and a one, that is not exclusive, right? They are, they, are, they are not different, in which case it returns false, or the zero. That's it. Uh, you extrapolate that out across not just, hey, a single bit, zero or a one, but across bytes, and you can do some interesting stuff, right? But it's all kind of in place, in line with the byte that it's being mapped to alongside the other operand. <laughs> I did a horrible job explaining that, but for now you can kind of get the magic, get the voodoo. It does some operation to manipulate and change the data. Uh, they do this across an entire string based off of a key that they end up extending to be the length of the original thing that it was trying to XOR it with. Because again, they have to be in line, right? Whatever, don't have to worry about it. It literally tells us this function will not help you find the flag. But they open up that flag.txt file and read in the contents. You might have seen us do that in, in previous videos, right? Even some of the early ones for the series. And we do a level one password check as a function that's defined and then called here down below. It asks us, please enter correct password for flag. Um, okay, it looks like it's taking string values and concatenating them all together with these plus signs. The uh, backslash allows us to carry on or continue onto a new line. Um, but, okay, if the user password is equal to this, if what we supply as input is equal to this, then it says, welcome back, here's your flag. 
and it will then decrypt the flag based off of the XOR function with the key named utilitarian. Maybe your key is different. I don't know. Otherwise, it tells you, hey, that password is incorrect. Okay. Uh, so we could play with this. I'm, I'm sure you know, hey, an immediate answer, right? But if I were to run this script with Python, please enter the correct password for the flag. It's obviously, please subscribe. I feel like my A key on my keyboard just doesn't work. <laughs> and that didn't work. But because we can see the code here, we know what the password is supposed to be. It's all of these strings concatenated together. So I'm just going to throw this down here so I can build out that answer, that correct password, as if all of these strings were put together and not broken out across different lines. So this whole thing is our password. If we submit this, there you go. Welcome back. Your flag is user Pico CTF patching life hack. Nice and easy. We didn't really end up doing any patching here, but because we can control what this script does, right? We can modify this and make it our own. If we wanted to patch it or make any changes and modify it, what if we just like had it run the decryption function and spit out the flag for us? It's probably pretty silly, pretty dumb, but seriously, let's just copy this, all the lines that are actually allowing us to XOR and decrypt the function uh, and then display it out. Decrypt the encrypted password. Uh, we don't need to do any of this crap anymore. We can comment that out. I'm using control forward slash on my keyboard. And we just run the function and print it out. Now all we have to do is run the script <laughs> and it gives us the flag. So that's nice and easy, right? But... Uh, Ultimately, all this is doing is making that XOR operation. Uh, XOR has a unique property, by the way. If you XOR something with a value X, right, uh, that is going to give you one value like Z. How about that? So if you X, XOR, oh God, I keep saying X. Maybe that's a bad example. Say we took A and B, we XOR them together and we got a value C. Sure, yeah, does that make sense? Say we took that C value, and we XORed it, it with like A, well, we're gonna get B now as our results because it's it's taking the pieces of the puzzle there and just kind of moving them around. Uh, what is that? Is that a transitive property? Is that an associate? <laughs> one of those things, one of those words. Uh, but all the parts of the puzzle uh, will still have to be associated with each other. The key is relative to the secret to get the message. And if you move one and whatever part, you get the other corresponding part. C XORed with B will give you A. You know what I mean? Whatever. Saying that out loud is really weird and dumb, but hopefully we could actually play with that. You know what? Let's do it. Let's play with it. Say we had the decrypted value. If we wanted to try and actually print out a, like, let's do it original uh, key. Let's say we took the decryption value and passed that in to XORed against our flag dot encoded value. If you were to kind of parallel these to that A and B and C silly thing that I just said aloud, what is the answer we should get out of this? You totally know it. You totally know especially considering the variable name that we're using here. It's utilitarian, but it's utilitarian stretched out to equal the length of the secret or the original message, right? Because they have to be in line. They ha as if they were stacked on top of each other or lined one row on another, they have to match so that the bits as they check each other, zero versus one, one versus zero, one versus one, they all have to be able to be in sync. And that is what that XOR allows us to do. So we take ut utilitarian, the key, and we fan it out and repeat it and extend it until it matches the length of the original data that we wanted there. So that's that. And that is XOR. Maybe we could very well have just used that to retrieve the flag. Honestly, that's all that they're doing. That's all That's all that this is encrypted with. So anyway, we have patched this function. We have gone ahead and actually um, solved this challenge here. So we could, does this even count? Does this, does this count as our get flag script? 
I don't know. <laughs> Let's save it so we have the flag.txt now and we can go ahead and finish that challenge and submit that flag. And now we have learned all about XOR and we played with some more Python code to get better at that scripting language and have some fun. So that's that, everybody. Hey, thank you so, so much. Thanks so much for tuning in this video. I hope you had a good time. Hope you learned something new. And if you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. You know, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, support, share it around. Anything that helps the channel grow, help these videos grow. I'm super duper grateful. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.